Hi, Linda Bowney here from StampingWithLinda.com, your cardiologist since 1997, helping you create cards from the heart. Today's video is called an embossed resist technique, and it's just a fun um, technique um, using your heat embossing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the flower. Uh, this is from the Band Together a bundle, and I am going to ink the flower with Versamark and I'm going to stamp it on a piece of Whisper white cardstock and then what I'm going to do is I am going to heat emboss it with my heat gun and white embossing powder so let's bring in my white embossing powder and cover that flower Looking pretty good. Grab my heat tool. I'm going to hold it away from um, the camera to heat it so that the sound is not um, as bad. You want to make sure that all of your powder is really heated um, well. And I'm going to bring it in to show you what it looks like. So you can see that the smaller flower, I'm hoping, um, down at the bottom has been uh, heated. The top has not. And so it kind of has a little granule look to it before it's heated. You want to make sure that its powders are heated very well so that they don't brush off. One thing with heat embossing is that once you, you need a wet source of ink to hold it or a wet source of something, but then the powder can lay on it until you heat it. There's no time for it to dry and fall off unless you uh, bump it. So you can do several of your projects and then set it aside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring my piercing mat. You know, this side is dirty, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. I am going to be using... Um, the Grapefruit Grove, the Highland Heather, and the Granny Apple Green uh, for my colors. So we're going to start with the grapefruit and we're going to just color in the center of the flower. And I'm just doing that with my dauber. And what happens is that the embossing resists the color. So then I'm going to grab my Highland Heather and again grab a dauber in that color and go in and do my flower. Now if you go out from the lines it's okay because the embossing is still going to show that detail of the flower. We've got that. I'm going to go down and get that smaller flower, get it colored. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a dauber in the Granny Apple Green to do my leaves and my stem. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over so that it'll show up better without all that inking that was done on the other side. So I'm just using the side of my dauber to get that stem. But then I want some background for it to stand out more. So I'm going to go into my grapefruit, grapefruit grove and I'm going to daub with that around the outside edge. So it's just going to pick that center of that flower color out more. Now I see a big storm is going to be rolling in here. I hope it doesn't start thundering and lightning before I get this card done. The sun was shining, beautiful day, and now all of a sudden this storm is moving in. So. Hopefully, we'll get done here. But what I'm doing is I'm just coloring the background um, with that Grapefruit Grove. 
just in a circular motion with my blends and then go back in here where it's a little bit tighter and again if you go off the lines it's really not going to matter because the colors just kind of blend together I was reminded about this technique from Marianne Rossiter, a member of my team. We have a challenge every month and last month was techniques and Marianne submitted a card that uh, won. Um, I will have her card over on my blog, stampingwithlinda.com, but I had forgotten all about um, embossed resist. so. I just thought this was a fun card to do with that technique. Now what I have already done is I have run through my die cut machine the die that comes with the bundle. Now this um, is the band together bundle and I have taken um, the dies from that and have, let me find a paper piercer here, I have um, already run it through the die with the grapefruit grove and let's see if I can pick that out of there uh, there's little holes in the die but this die is very delicate so there it goes so it's just kind of a fun border I'm going to add some adhesive to it and then I'm just going to wrap that around the bottom of my card like right here just to give it a different design. I'm then going to go in and grab my Gingham Gala um, self-adhesive um, sequins. I'm going to put those around in a few places. Oops, got more than I want. Let's put one up there. Oops. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my rhinestones and I'm going to grab some rhinestones and put them in the center. You really want to push them down to make sure that the adhesive um, attaches, but I love those self-adhesive sequins with the rhinestones. I think it just really adds to your project. Isn't that pretty? Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a piece of Highland Heather and this measures um, I think three and three quarter by five and a quarter and I'm going to add that to the front. I'm going to bring in my card base, Grapefruit Grove, five and a half by eight and a half. And we're just going to score that for our card base and then add our piece. So the band together bundle just has some beautiful bands that go around um, your card to just add some texture to it. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.